Right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, build a section like this. Uh, you see these overlapping elements here that are overlapping the header? Uh, we're going to do something like that. So I just want to show you how easy it is now with the CSS transform to be able to move this element around. Uh, without taking it out of the flow of the document, uh, but using CSS to take it out of the flow of the document. So um, we have our header here, and it's just a background image. It could be an actual image, doesn't matter, uh, but we have it just sort of set up here. Um, and then we need to come in and we need to write our section underneath. We're just going to call this uh, Features. And then I want to make sure I put an inner section in that. I like to use intersections for, um, we're going to use display flex, so flex box on this part here, and it also allows me to control spacing and margins on the side. So we can set a max width on the features inner, but this can still be a full width. So if you wanted to have this uh, feature section be, um, you know, a color background or something like that, it would go all the way across the page. So. I sort of like to, it's not a default thing that I do, but I use it quite a bit uh, because we're just trying to control, uh, this is okay to go all the way across the page, but you know, you want to control the spacing um, on your uh, sections or your divs or whatever's internal, uh, just so on a large screen it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get too unwieldy whenever you're on a large screen. Uh, so we have our section, it's called Features, and then inside that we're going to have our different cards. So we're going to call it a Features card, and we'll just do this a few times. I'm well aware I could copy and paste, but there's only three of them. So uh, inside that, uh, each one of these we're going to have a little heading. So I'm just going to use an H4, just because it's not too big. Um, so we'll say feature, Features Heading. And then inside, uh, just under that, we're going to have a little bit of text. And I like to come to, uh, this is a, something I keep, it's called uh, Meaningful Ipsum. If you look it up on GitHub, you can see it. And what it is is just uh, first chapters from different uh, famous books. And it's just text that you can copy and paste. So instead of using the typical lorem ipsum, uh, you're just using some real, actual words that have been put together. This is probably going to be a little bit too much uh, text. We don't want to say quite that much, so let's just cut this down a little bit. Let's take away one paragraph. <clears throat> okay, so we have a little bit of text here. Uh, we have our heading, and when we're on mobile, uh, it's not too bad. That's uh, This is actually sort of the style that we're going to go for. Uh, but once it comes out to maybe six or 700 pixels, we want it to uh, start producing these cards. Um, and let's just go ahead and style our cards right now. So the features card <coughs> is going to have a border of, uh, let's say, two pixels, solid, and triple E. And so you see, can see over there that we get our border. Um, let's add features inner. We're going to have a little bit of padding there. So just to separate those from the edges. Uh, features card, we're going to have a little... <coughs> let's just style the card first and then I'll do the second one. So padding, a one rim. So just to make our cards uh, a little bit nicer, add a little white space. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to create a little space between these. And the way I like to do that when there's a set of three is I go to use my nth child and then I say uh, the number two out of the three. So now this uh, nth child is like saying features card, um, sorry, and nth child 2, so it's just like saying that, but this is how we write it in SAS, so it's like saying features card, which is this ampersand, and then in child 2. So we're going to target this one, the one in the middle, 
and then we're just going to give that one uh, a little bit of margin on the top and bottom uh, but not on the left and right so you can see that it nicely separates them then this is easy when you have a, a set of three um, <clears throat> or if you have an uneven uh, set so if you had five or if you had seven or something like that you could even target the um, it would be the even so the number two is an even number so if you had five then it would go down to number two and then it would go down to number four and it would add the margin and you'd be good to go so just a little trick uh, with the CSS so you don't have to go in and actually uh, give it a whole new name uh, or a new class so we'll just use two since we only have three of these and so that gives us a nice spacing and this is um, this is really good for uh, this size and once I get to about we'll just put it at 600 that's when I want to uh, call this as display flex and we start putting our cards up here so at 600 pixels we want to make um, <coughs> we want to make this features inner a display flex so we'll say display flex and then now you can see that we have our three cards here uh, we're getting our weird spacing here that was this margin that we put here so let's go ahead and remove that once we get to 600 pixels so we can come down indent that correctly and then we'll just say uh, margin zero and one rim so we're just gonna flip the margin so instead of the margin on the top and bottom when they're stacked we're just gonna put the margin on the left and right and now they're they're relatively um, even and what we need uh, here um, I don't like that it it's getting so big so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a maximum width on this section <coughs> and we'll say that maximum width is um, let's say a thousand where does it look good let's say 950 pixels so on the features intersection that's the one uh, we can actually put it here at the 600 so because maximum width will let it still grow until we get to until we get to whatever this maximum width number is and we'll just say 950 pixels that's one way that you can tell uh, is you just keep stretching it until it starts to look bad to you so if you're a little bit confused about how to do media queries um, and responsive styling just start you know stretching the page and start seeing what elements look like and when they look like they just aren't the right size anymore set a breakpoint and that's where your breakpoint should be uh, and then we're going to set a margin of auto so that those go to the center and so now you see that even though we're out uh, really wide at 1400 pixels then this is still staying, st staying centered at only 1000 pixels so our cards don't really break and they stay really nice okay and now uh, we need to uh, do this part so we need to get these cards uh, somehow from right here to up here and the way that we're going to do that uh, is I'm going to use what's called CSS transform and I'm going to use it here on the features intersection and at as soon as we get our cards here at 600 pixels I want them to come up and I want this line here to go right through the center and so we come up and we say transform so essentially I want to transform this entire block of code okay and transform allows us to do all kinds of fun, thing, fun things like um, <coughs> moving things from one place to another scaling things um, rotating things skewing things so there's all kinds of different uh, moves that we can make with the transform property different values I encourage you to look it up on uh, <coughs> on Mozilla developer network um, just to see all the different things that you can do with the transform property all the values in this one we're going to use something called translate and translate uh, doesn't have anything to do with language 
it has to do with moving this around the page somehow in two dimensions either vertically or moving it horizontally so we want to translate it along the Y axis and then it takes uh, two parameters two values here and I'm gonna say minus 50 percent okay clearly I did not put a background on here so let's give these a background of white <coughs> so that they show and they're not transparent okay so we have successfully uh, translated our cards up now we did not have to use absolute positioning so these are in the flow of the document itself they're not out of the flow of the document um, and that means we preserve you know everything underneath it's just that we're moving everything up so um, I don't know if that makes sense to you or not maybe we can see it this could be a big fail I don't know I've not tried this yet okay so now you can see how it works <clears throat> so you can see that this is our section right here okay so our section is holding its place on the page everything underneath is sort of in the flow of the document still this is all in the flow of the document too it's just that we have moved it we have translated it by 50 percent of itself so the features inner uh, goes all the way across and it's this tall and so it goes 50 percent of itself it's holding all of these cards okay so 50 percent of this card is half right so if you set this to 20 percent it only moves everything up 20 percent of what the features inner is so this is 20 percent here so hopefully that makes sense if you set it to 80 percent it would push it all the way almost all the way up if you set it to 100 percent of itself that's like saying double double the features inner okay remember our features inner has a little bit of padding to it so that's why we're getting this down here if it were 90 percent it would be pretty close to the bottom so <coughs> excuse me um this is really powerful to be able to use transform because we keep everything oh you can see it there so you can see how everything sits uh whenever we're not moving it around okay um this might be overkill for you i'm just trying to show you uh exactly what this transform is doing because it's not completely obvious unless you have another section underneath it and maybe this is the look that you're going for but this is the one that we're going for is uh, with the cards over top and you can see that we still preserve our, our spacing under here and we can even control that by controlling this background section here but we are just taking these things and moving them up so whenever we translate them 50 percent it moves them up the line goes right through the middle and we preserve our um, we preserve our centering of our section so that's pretty cool and uh, I see these a lot and you can see here that because they're not taken out of the flow they still take up their own space on the page so you don't have to deal with uh, absolute positioning and things like that so uh, and if you ever wanted to do uh, make make this element sticky or anything you don't have to do anything special you just add a position sticky to it and then that would be sticky and so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of advantages to not taking things out of the flow of the document uh, and this transform uh, translate property really helps us to be able to do that okay so if you have any questions or comments please leave them down in the comment section below uh, I love to hear from you guys uh, what what are you learning what is difficult what is easy what do you not understand and uh, I appreciate if you share the videos with others or if you just tell people where you got this and also if you like this give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe uh, click the subscribe button and you'll get notifications when I <clears throat> post new videos usually I don't know a couple a week and uh, just dealing with front-end development problems like this and showing you how to make cool stuff all right, uh, I think that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.